So a few years back, we had a pretty interesting case. We got hired by someone who will remain nameless, but he was from Texas, and he was, he was an older guy in his 50s. He worked for Lockheed Martin building the Black Hawk helicopters. You know, no criminal history or anything. And actually, he was, it was around Christmas time, and he was getting ready to go home to do a hunt with his family for Christmas. So he was, you know, had his stuff on his bed, but that night before he was leaving the following day, he, they were having a little bit of a get together at his own uh, house's little condo pool with the neighbors he knows and everybody. So he's there that night and everybody's, you know, drinking, having a good time. Obviously he ends up having a little bit too much to drink. And so he thinks it's funny when he, go, he goes back to his condo, he gets his rifle, it's not loaded, and he puts Christmas deer antlers on the front, and he goes out naked with his rifle. You know, this is my rifle, completely joking, but waving it around to the point where some neighbors got really scared and freaked out. So, you know, he is plastered at this time. You know, he's just, and they end up calling the police. So two police officers show up that are clearly inexperienced. So what they do is they are screaming at him to put the gun down. Meanwhile, the gun is already on the ground and he's just kind of walking around naked. So he comes closer to them and is standing over the rifle and they both scream, you know, put it down, yet it's already down and they both panic and they shoot him numerous times, both of them. So these two officers both shoot him numerous times and neither one could tell me how many times they shot. But what was funny is both of them testified that the gun was pointed at me when I fired and the partner said the gun was pointed at me when I fired. So the jury took that as, well, it can't be pointed in both places, and they clearly panicked. So here's what ended up happening. There was also the other people at the apartment who were alleged victims. So they claimed that the rifle was pointed at them and all this and all that. What ends up happening is he ends up getting arrested. He ends up being held in jail until his trial because he is charged with six counts of attempted first degree murder with a firearm and two counts of aggravated assault with a firearm on a law enforcement officer. What that did was it gave him minimum mandatories, as you can imagine. He didn't fire his gun. So each minimum mandatory, though, was three years. So three, six, nine, 12, no criminal history. So he had about 21 years minimum mandatory that he was facing if he went to trial. State attorney's office offers him nine years in prison. This is a man who has never done anything wrong in his life. He, you know, he has high security clearance from building Black Hawk helicopters. He's in his 50s, he got shot numerous times. So it was one of those cases where we had to tell the client, listen, we gotta just knuckle up and go to trial. So our trial strategy was, obviously he was out there drunk, doing stupid things and there was a gun out there. So we, there's a charge, improper exhibition of a weapon or a firearm, and that is a first degree misdemeanor. So our strategy was, we'll go in there and we get to admit guilt, right? We get credibility from the jury, we say, you know what, we're here today because he was stupid. Because he, what did he do? He improperly exhib exhibited his gun or firearm. It's exactly why we have that statute. And you'll notice in your jury packet form that it's a lesser included offense. So we are accepting responsibility that this is what he did. He was guilty of improper exhibition of a weapon, and that's what he should be found guilty for, but not the attempted murders that have premeditation or have you know 1020 life attached. So after some deliberation, sure enough, the jury comes back not guilty on the ag assault on the firearm with the officers because their testimony did not match up at all, and improper exhibition of a weapon on the six other counts. So obviously that's a one year misdemeanor, so the state attorney thinks, okay, well at least I'll get six years. But when we, when we get to sentencing, little did they know that improper exhibition of a weapon has no victims. So there's no alleged victims. So for the same incident, you can't have six charges. So the court was then forced to dismiss five out of the six charges, and he's left with one misdemeanor, improper exhibition of a weapon, Time served, the judge had to release him.